This video is part of our coverage of the 2022 Consumer Electronics Show, or CES. We planned to be there in person this year, but the pandemic had other ideas. But since that can also be said for many of the companies we plan to cover, it works out. Except we spent a ton of money on the trip that we aren't getting back, so if you support the channel, thank you! And if you're not a supporter yet, you can find links below to where you can help us out. Our whole society is in a bit of a weird moment right now. Computers, software, and apps have come to dominate every aspect of our lives, and there are real conversations about the nature of experience in a world where many believe augmented and virtual reality will redefine our very sense of self. And the auto industry? Well, it's in the midst of a disruption the likes of which we haven't seen for decades, if not longer. Obviously, there's the shift to electric propulsion, which has quickly transitioned from a niche market for nerds and techies into a mainstream movement that will reshape how we power the machines that take us where we want to go. But as radical as dumping the pump for the plug is, autonomous vehicles seem poised to potentially reshape our very relationship with our transportation and environment. Eventually. Maybe. And I think it's with that context that we have to look at BMW's presentation at CES 2022. Because it didn't bear much resemblance to what I think many of us have traditionally thought of in terms of BMW's values and priorities. I mean, one of the very first things we were told during their presentation was that the BMW experience should, quote, make you forget you're sitting in a car. And that's a weird thing for a car maker to say. The statement that, quote, power is great, but sometimes you want to relax was a bit less odd from the company that makes the luxurious 7 Series and the B7 Alpina. But it's still kind of strange. The one nod to the company's heritage that I saw was the repeated phrase, quote, the ultimate driving machine meets the ultimate digital experience. And if you know what that means, I'd love to hear it. With that in mind, let's dive into some things we were told during the presentation. First and foremost, Peter Noda was proud to announce that BMW had just sold its one millionth electrified vehicle. So let's be real clear. That figure includes hybrids and mile hybrids, not just plug-in hybrids and battery electric vehicles. Given that Toyota, an admittedly much higher volume automaker, has sold over 15 million hybrids, it's not as impressive a figure as it sounds. From there, the presentation moves into discussion of the new BMW iX M60, which joins the i40 M50 as the first two all-electric models to bear BMW's legendary performance-oriented M badge. But other than some basic figures, the presentation told us next to nothing about the driving or performance of the car, other than that it has the same performance as the petrol-powered X5M. This is presented as a good thing, but an automotive landscape that's pretty used to electrons beating out petrol it doesn't feel very impressive. The company's press release does give a bit more to go on, though, describing a car with over 800 pound-feet of torque and launch control, a 3.8 second sprint time, a WLTP range of over 350 miles, and a gross battery capacity of 111 kilowatt hours. But that's not what the company was excited about for CES. Instead, it was all about personalization and non-driving elements of the car experience. In the case of BMW's My Modes, which it described as a tool for creating a quote, holistic driving experience, you get a variety of parameters that you can customize, from motor performance and vehicle settings to display layout, lighting, and soundscape. More on that in a moment. The digital art mode, which brings digital art into the car in a way that I'll admit I'm still a bit vague about, enables BMW's customers to quote, experience culture in their mobile everyday lives. I guess Madonna's Vogue just doesn't cut on the culture front for BMW. Also connected to BMW's My Modes are the BMW Iconic Sounds Electric, five new driving sounds by Academy and Grammy award-winning composer Hans Zimmer. Personally, I like my EVs silent, but I know that many people really prefer a soundscape of some form, and we've seen automakers getting competitive with each other about what sorts of sounds are produced by their electric cars. Zimmer is a giant in the world of cinema sound, which ties in well to BMW's focus on luxury in-car entertainment. BMW's theater mode incorporates automatic window shades, high-end audio, interior lighting, and a massive 31-inch high-end screen to provide an immersive cinema experience for backseat passengers, presumably while the car isn't driving, but I could be wrong about that. We were told that the screen and cinema mode we saw in the presentation are nearly production ready, not just the sort of pie-in-the-sky concept stuff you often see at events like CES. I fundamentally don't understand this. I'm eager to get into one, but just from what I'm seeing, the iX doesn't seem to be a rear seat passenger focused vehicle like some of BMW's Rolls Royce models. This screen and theater mode go way beyond keeping the kids occupied on a road trip. Is BMW imagining that people will say, I want to watch a movie, let's go out to the car and put something on? But if there's one thing BMW is known for at shows like this, it's bringing out some wacky concept that highlights some idea or technology, but which isn't likely to ever come to market. 
Perhaps the most famous of these was the Vision Next 100 concept, with its flexible snakeskin-like outer shell that enclosed the wheels. Not so bold as that, but still striking, is the iX Flow e-ink concept shown at CS 2022. This car is entirely covered in e-ink panels, the technology you may know from e-reader world such as the Amazon Kindle. The iX Flow can change colors from black to white using e-ink, and thanks to hundreds of individual segments can even show animations moving across the vehicle's body. It's trippy and weird and absurd, and I kinda love it, even though I don't think it'll ever make sense on a production vehicle. But unlike the giant screen I mentioned earlier, this isn't really a production intense sort of thing. There's a long way to go in terms of development before it's more than a thought experiment in the metal. BMW's Stella Clark, who led the project, talked about the implications for this sort of technology moving forward, such as being able to change the color of one's car at will, though let's be honest, it'd more likely be for a fee. But it could also be used to change reflectivity based on outside light, or as part of a display to indicate rideshare status, or make the car flash help you find it in a parking lot. I think there's a good chance we'll see this tech evolve, and while whole cars covered in this stuff seems vanishingly unlikely, I could see applications even for smaller panels if the technology continues to be refined. I'm not sure I'd have thought of that if not for my recent experiment with Porsche's electrically dimmable glass roof, which was science fiction stuff not too, too long ago. I'll admit, I wasn't super excited by BMW's presentation, but perhaps that's only because it's looking farther into the future than I am. When I think of a BMW, I think of, quote, the ultimate driving machine. And EVs have so much potential for driving awesomeness that felt untapped by the vehicle elements highlighted in this presentation. Now, that may be because it just goes without saying that a BMW is going to drive incredibly. I'm eager to get behind the wheel of an iX and or an i40 soon, and I truly don't expect to be disappointed. But for a company that led the way into electrification with its i-series vehicles in the early days of the modern EV revolution, and that's produced some of the best driver's cars of the last half century, I wanted more than a big TV, Hans Zimmer score, and an animated body shell. You know, that last bit was pretty damn cool. But in a world where autonomous vehicles may transform our relationship to driving, those things can end up being a lot more important than how I feel behind the wheel heading into a corner. That's it for today. If you liked the video, be sure to give it a thumbs up, and don't forget to leave your thoughts below or in our free to join Discord chat room. There's a link in the video description. If you haven't already, make sure you've subscribed to this channel and our other channel, Transfer Evolve Take 2, for longer takes. And don't forget to give the bell a little ring on both our channels so you don't miss our next video. Thanks on behalf of the entire T crew, go out to the folk on my right for being our $15 to $49 a month patrons. Special thanks to our $50 a month patrons, Chris Maxwell, Brian Newton, Jason Boder, Dave Kitchen, Michael Goad, Ricky Long, Andrew Martin, Guido Drahada, Brophy Wolf, Tesla the Gong, Gordon C., Stephen O'Donoghue, Kyle Hodson, Anthony Coates, Regine Fellows, Rory Litwin, Anonymous Freak, Jim Burness, and Denny Hyde. And our deepest gratitude to our 100 a month Patreon supporters, Marcel Ward, Reggie Watts, Joe Bresny, JP Fagerback, Will Grayland, Matthew Drobnak, John Lyons, Christopher Lloyd-Jones, Laura Reynolds, Paul Conway, Ellery Hensley, and Ian. Feeling left out? You can join our Patreon at the link below, or show us your support through Bitcoin, Kofu, or our cool swag store. Thanks for joining me, and as always, Keep evolving!